Hey everyone, I'm Katie Darrell. Today we are at home and social with Meredith Brooks. How's it going? It's going great. I love well, his hair, by the way. It's fabulously curly. I woke up this way, Meredith. <laughs> As if. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, hey, so this year is a really big year for you. 25th anniversary of this song, Bitch. Uh, the censored title is Nothing in Between. We might lean towards that during this conversation so we don't get dinged too much. But Which I've never even heard until I think some fans wrote it like last week or something. I said, I've never heard that before. You're like, what's nothing in between? <laughs> yeah, what's nothing in between? That's exactly what I said. Like, what's nothing in between? Well, yeah, let's talk about censorship for a minute. I, I mean, we're going to dig into the song. I'm going to dig into your career. Uh, we're going to talk about Billie Eilish randomly. Uh, that's going to be a sidestep for your fans tuning in. But um, censorship, when you wrote this song, people said, you can't do it. You can't do it, Meredith. And what did you say back? I never had anybody say that. I really, I heard that the, the record label didn't want to put it out because they were afraid that there was going to be backlash on the word well, and the censoring. Okay, okay, that is actually true. They were concerned about that. So they took the song literally back in those days. You couldn't just, you know, digitally download it. They took the song around the world and played it. And everybody was like, can we keep it? It's a hit. The only place in the world that wanted me to change the lyrics was, I, well, I'm not going to say, because I, I think we've made up and everything's okay, but they wanted me to change the lyric to witch. And I said, I'm a oh. witch? Yeah. <laughs> I said, mm, no, I don't do that. But <clears throat> no, that was the only one. There was one country. and I It think would have made fun. a really fun music video, though. You around a fire, maybe <laughs> well, with a Stevie Nicks shawl. Only if Stevie would do it. Then I would absolutely do whatever she wanted. No, I think I think I finally allowed some crazy guy in Australia to do bloke because it was so stupid. It made me laugh so much. I was like, I, I don't care if you really, really want to do it and you want to make a fool out of yourself. As long as you don't put my name anywhere on this, go ahead. <laughs> but, um, no, nobody did that. And I went around the world and I never, it was never censored. I never went into a, a single radio station. I went into every single radio station across the world and I sang it by guitar and brought bagels and, you know, did the whole bit and, you know, how you do the meet and greets of the radio stations. And back in the day, it, yeah. It was never a thing. The first time I ever had it censored was I was on Facebook and, I think it was Lizzo had woke up in the morning. She was singing it. I was like, oh, that's so cool. She's so cool. sexy. And I'm like, so Shelly, quite here. Shelly Pikin, know. yeah. Yeah, my writing partner. She's like, oh my God, we got to like post this and, you know, hashtag it. And I'm like, okay, well, let's do it. We put it up and all of a sudden we're getting bleep, 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 bleep. And we're like, what the hell are you bleeping us for? And <clears throat> it's because we wrote bitch instead of B-I, some kind of a symbol. Right, yeah, exclamation point. B, exclamation point, uh, no. T-C-H. No, grow up. <laughs> no. Grow up. No. Grow up, social media. It's It's been long. Like, that's going so backwards, I couldn't even believe it. <clears throat> so I, I still don't. I just do it. Are, are you a believer in, uh, you know, time flies when you're having fun, right? Because we are at the 25th anniversary of this song and it doesn't feel like it, to me at least. Okay. Truth? It was because of the fans I even knew it. Someone said one day, oh, it's your 25th anniversary. Are you going to do a vinyl? I'm like, what are you talking about? What? Vinyl? I don't think so. What are you talking about? 25th. Oh, a blur in the edges. And I love that song. I love this song. I love that song. And I love Scratchy Girl. And maybe you could put Scratchy Girl on the cover. I'm like, choo -choo 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 -choo, looking through everything. Oh my God. Okay, let me add 1997. Oh, and I freaked out. And that was only like a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. So I started calling like people, like business managers and managers, going, like, um, we got to get on this. Is this a thing? <laughs> Lilith well, it, it turns Fair out calling. Lilith Fair is now calling like it's the 25th anniversary and women, women's international. And so everybody knows about these anniversaries. 
but more. You mentioned Lilith Fair and the Lilith uh, Sirius XM radio station had you on recently. Um, what was it like to, to go in there? Was it was it just a walk down memory lane? Did you get to curate some of the music? What what was your exact role when you had to go in there? there that was really fun. We, uh, we uh, did a guest host for Lilith Fair channel. We had our own channel for a right. month. Well, I don't know. If it, was it a month? Yes, I think it was a month. And I know Cheryl did it. Cheryl Crow did it. Um, I know Sarah, of course. Like she led the charge and um, sorry, who else? Jewel, Jewel did it. There was, a, oh, yeah. there was a group of us. I'm, I'm just remembering the ones that I was on. I think Paula Cole might've done it. I'm not positive, but I know she has a new album coming out too. Like everybody else is doing things. COVID's over, 25th year, you know, legacy. Everybody's in their legacy sure. year. And so, um, yeah, I picked my favorite artists. I, not my favorite artists. That, that is ridiculous. Like they were all my favorite artists, but the sure. ones that I had the most connection with and hung out with, like Queen Latifah, of course. And um, and then I talked about their songs and just some of my experiences with my own songs. And um, then they they wanted me to talk about writing some of my songs and things like that. That's uh, one of my favorite memories. One of, uh, okay, well, I, I'm not sure this will be one of your favorite memories, but I know this probably will stick out when you were playing uh, and the crowd got abusive in Argentina. Uh, you oh, were you opening got, oh, up no. for the Rolling Stones and people started throwing stuff at the stage. That was a crazy thing. Well, but I can't, you, how do you even, you, you can't prepare for that to have an audience go haywire on you, right? I could have. Apparently it happens to everybody who opens for the stone. So oh, actually I could have prepared for that. I could have come out in an armored suit, which I would have been happy to do. And I'm kind of stubborn. Like I did not want to leave that stage and I didn't, I literally got picked up because I'm more of the kind of girl. It's like, I was invited here by the stones. Like this is my moment. Yeah. Like everybody probably has their moment when they think they've made it. That was my moment. Like, are you kidding me? I am with the Rolling Stones right now. You are not budging me off this stage for anything. Heck yeah. And I planted my feet and they just throw whatever the hell they wanted at me. I'm not leaving this stage. Like this is, I own this stage right now. Mick Jagger said so. <laughs> so do you think I'm leaving? Well, <clears throat> they got too crazy and people started getting hurt. And the next thing I knew, somebody was behind me just, whoop. <laughs> Pick you up, <laughs> put you down. Just like that. Your little legs flailing like a, a Muppet. <laughs> Apparently, but just like that. And um, yeah, it was, yeah, my, my hotel though looked like a funeral home when I got there. The fans were so upset and they did, wanted me to know that they aren't like that, you know? Right. <laughs> like they Flowers were sad and, and they were upset. And so, you know, then I find out it happened to Prince, it happened to Cheryl Crow, it happened to, like, I'm like, Nobody happened to mention that to me. I wonder why. For those of you just joining us, I'm Katie Darrell and she is Meredith Brooks. We are at home and social. We are celebrating not just the 25th anniversary of uh, the platinum song, Bitch, and the album that it came off of, Blurring the Edges, but we are also celebrating coming up on June 2nd. You are going to be honored. You're getting a trophy. Who doesn't <laughs> love a trophy? Uh, you're going to be trophy? honored by the um, She Rocks Awards. Uh, you're a trailblazer. Um, okay, so that is really exciting because I, I started looking more and more into it and I'm like, you know, when, when you're running around so much in the world, I didn't get to go to a lot of these things. I just get mm -hmm. the thing in the mail. Like I just got something in the mail from when we did the baby Rexa thing. I wasn't, didn't get to be there. I was like, I, it's not as much fun getting it in the mail. You wanna be there. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna totally be there. So I'm also gonna be there if you wanna come and see I'm gonna play. I guess I'm, I'm so gonna excited. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be co-hosting with Lizzie Hale and you're gonna be there. Dion Warwick is gonna be there. I mean, it's gonna be a blast. Tickets are available. Uh, if people can't make it uh, and get their tickets for the She Rocks Awards, they can watch it streaming on Access TV. There's a, there's a lot of different ways to get involved. I think Lindsay Parker from Yahoo is gonna be doing like the red carpet and everything, which oh brings me to the really important question, Meredith, what are you gonna wear? <laughs> Okay, so you must, you must know us so well because immediately I started stressing. I was like, I'm stressing. I'm co-hosting this thing. And I was like, oh man, I really need to buy something. <laughs> I, was like, oh, 
I am. Well, luckily, like I just told you, my stylist friend from LA was just at my house and <clears throat> she just left on a trip. I'm like, so do you think you can help me out here? She's like, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'm like, <laughs> that is so cool. Who doesn't like uh, to get dressed up? You know, it's rock and roll. It, it exactly right. We get to show up in jeans and a t-shirt and just, we'll be cool. We'll be cool. man. we could show up in anything and be cool. I, uh, you I you actually really... mentioned the, the Bebarexa thing. Can you tell our fans, uh, fill them in on, on everything that happened with Bebarexa? Well, it, you know, it, there's an, okay. I'll have to show you the name of this because this is her department. Um, there's an actual name, but it's kind of a sound alike when somebody writes a song and, and, and it sounds like, um, which happens a lot. You know, it does happen a lot. It actually happened with me in, a, in another famous song, but back then they didn't have, it either had to be a straight copyright thing mm -hmm. or you didn't win your case. Now they have it where it's really smart. If you write a song and it actually sounds like something, you have the opportunity to say, hey dude, I didn't even mean to, but it doesn't. So um, I really want to do the right thing here. Great, as it should be. And they, they, they heard it. They realized I'm a mess, sounded like, I'm a bitch and they they knew so that then they, you get they, added on as a writing credit yeah, right yeah and I mean honestly I did I feel like I was a writer on it no but I did they do the right thing I would have said yes if I were a judge on it at first I would have gone let me listen one more time and in the end I would have said yeah, yeah you're gonna have to go there if I was like a musicologist but there are several other songs out there that Shelly and I have sometimes gone, oh my God, like, do they not know that's like note for note for note for note? Like, but it happens all the time. I mean, I've done it myself and then I've had to like shelve the song because I've gone, uh-oh, I think I just- Yeah, I think I just stole a YouTube song? song or something. <laughs> It is though. Oh, Songwriting is something. tricky, right? Th like that, because you know you can have an earworm. Something could be stuck in your head, and and do you have that panic as you're making a song? No, that you're like, this is so good. Oh no, wait, did I steal it? Did I steal? No, okay, no, it's mine. I did this. I did this. Or <laughs> no, do I don't. I, I get to that place usually in production, okay, when all of a sudden it's all come together, and then I go, oh, that, because I'm. I don't know if this is a compliment or not, but one of my lawyers, I love this guy so much. He's from Nashville. And he said, you know what you are? And I said, well, he goes, you're a hooker. I'm like, what? I'm going to slap you. <laughs> but he's right. Like I, not, not just in singing, but like my guitar playing, there's always a hook, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you get done with the production, you're like, oh, even in bitch, there was a little bit of a close one there, you know, almost, there was almost, which I'm not going to say it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't say it. <laughs> uh, a lot of people, this is weird, fun fact. I mm. love this piece of information. Um, you homeschooled your son. Yeah. You, and th there, there were some other interesting children in the, this class, maybe someone named Phineas, maybe Billy Eilish. Uh, so I mean, talk about a crazy small world, right? Yeah. I mean, there was, <clears throat> excuse me, in LA, there's a very large homeschool it's kind of the new uh private school a lot of us you know we're like we want our children to be creative like why would we stick them in a you know brick and mortar place and right. so um there was a, a bunch of women who had started this co-op ma mainly one and and then they all had creative a lot of creative children a lot of creative parents a lot of us in the industry and um you know, you had a lot of actors and musicians and dancers. And <clears throat> and then we did the same fun science, like Harry Potter science, not boring science. And, you know, math. We did we did everything. For like, all your you wizarding do... needs that come up later on in life. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, let's do uh, let's 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 all get checkbooks and learn how to do actual math for, like you know, or Lego math or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, so anyway. Um, yeah. So we were all in that group together, Billy and Phineas and, and um, my son actually happened to worship the ground Phineas walk on because who didn't? And we had talent shows and things like that. And, you know, at the time, um, first it was mostly Phineas, you know, playing the piano and I was, I, you know, none of us walked in there with our badge on, I'm Meredith Brooks. Sure, you know, yeah. Rock star. We were just moms. <laughs> Well, there but were children around. I, I mean, your song title maybe wasn't great for eight-year-olds either. 
Well, some moms didn't think that way because they knew what it actually meant. No, I, I had a few eight-year-old parties singing at the top of their lungs because their mom allowed it on my, you know, message machine. But, um, you know, there were, there were a lot of, uh, we did a lot of talent shows. It was really fun. It was fun for the kids. And I can remember the first time I ever heard Finish, you know, on the keyboard singing. And I'm like, oh, that kid right there yeah you know and so um you know Maggie and I were at the time friends and she was always cooking gluten-free and vegan and stuff like that so but there's a lot of them not just them um you you have a lot of accomplishments obviously um but something that I find really interesting is I think it was is it guitar player magazine you were on the cover of the magazine and you're like only one of like three or four women that have ever been on the cover of this. <laughs> I think there have been more now. At the time, yeah. But I, I mean, I literally campaigned for that cover where everybody else trying to get the cover of Rolling Stone. I really I was like, yeah, sure. But I felt everything in my life was about the achievement of like, getting everybody to understand that I played every single guitar Mm -hmm. everything you thought was a keyboard was actually me with a brand new some kind of a new you know tool or instrument you know when I found out garbage was using this thing I called the silver box I went right out and bought it <laughs> you know? and I copied I studied I studied you know butch big and you know I was just like that was always me I still have my I don't have it up here I wish I could drag you down to the next down down below here um my into my, your dungeon. <laughs> my dungeon and um but I have where my my um red marshall amp from you know it's 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 older than bitch you know but it's it's was the first one and I think I got it when I was 17 years old and so um <clears throat> like I was always playing with sounds and different things so I really you know when I was with Capitol and they would take these cute pictures of me I'd be like that one doesn't have a guitar in it. You can't use it. And they'd be like, mm. I'm sorry. I just saw an end cap. I mean, I drove these people insane. That end cap does not have a guitar on it. They'd be like, what? They didn't even know what I was we talking about. We gotta redo, about. gotta redo they it. Like know. got your <laughs> peanut <laughs> butter and jelly, was. right? Meredith Brooks and her guitar. Yeah. <clears throat> they said, nobody's going to care about that. I said, no, they, they won't. But I do because at one, one day, Every girl that walks by, every little girl that walks by mm -hmm. and sees that video and then sees me on stage is going to say, mom, I want a guitar. And that's exactly what pretty much started happening. Then you yeah. had Daisy Rock Guitar, then you had um, Rocker Girl Magazine, Rocker Girl Camps, you know, every, you know, it just all started pouring in. And so ha, 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 my plan worked. So I wanted the cover really badly. <laughs> Guitar players, it wasn't easy. Literally, they came down, and I am not dissing because maybe they did this with guys. Who knows? I don't know. But I wanted it so bad. I said, you know what? I'm going to just prove to them that every sound that they heard on this album is a guitar. And I took them into the studio, and I soloed every track. Yeah. Showed them which guitar, what all my stuff was. They took you know pictures of all my gear. And I think they were really impressed in the in the end because then a lot of guitar magazines after that came forward. And they're like, "Holy shit, that wasn't an organ. No, that's 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 my Strat over there. Yeah, and playing it through. You know, this Leslie over here." <clears throat> and then they were like, "That is really cool." And so I I remember Lita Ford told us a story similar to that where when she was f uh, doing the music video for uh, uh, "If I Close My Eyes Forever" with Ozzy Osbourne, she tried to put in so many guitars, her playing all these different guitars so that she would reiterate to people that I was playing this one. See, then I played this double neck and then I did this because she felt that she had to shove it in people's face because no one was giving her credit. Um, and so oh, I like that you- badass. <laughs> she's well, badass. Let me tell you when one I- One badass knowing another badass. Come when, on, I, when I started, there was, as far as the women playing guitar thing, yeah. I only had the runaways Nancy Wilson mm -hmm. and Bonnie Raitt and Fanny, who I didn't really know about them because they had been there and kind of broken up. And remember, we didn't have the internet to look at. We had a magazine here or there, yeah. or if an album came out. So that's all 
I had. And um, it was actually my sister when, when I was playing, when I stole her guitar. <laughs> Well, she ran away from home and I said, well, I, you know, I said, I'm, I'm stealing your guitar. And when she came home, she said, no, don't just be a guitar player, be a lead guitar player. I said, what's a lead guitar player? She put on Eric Clapton, Layla. And I, and she said, that is lead guitar. I said, that is smart. And I, <laughs> that's, a, that's what started. But there weren't, you know, and, and so I didn't have a lot of understanding that there was a differentiation until I kind of got out there and, I never saw girls, any females playing guitar. And, mm-hmm. and it was like kind of a shocker. Like everybody in the Northwest knew me. That was not, that. I, I was just one of the boys. But when I got to LA, it was a whole different story. It was like, I wasn't given a chance. You know, it was kind of like I'd walk mm-hmm. into the studio and there'd be six studio guys there. I'm like, what are you guys doing here? Like, oh, we're here to play on the record. I'm like, get out of here. See the door. Bye. See ya. I got this. No, it wasn't quite like that. I had to work well, hard for it. Well, congratulations on the 25th anniversary of Bitch and your album, Blurring the Edges. Also, mm-hmm. big congratulations on going to be, you're going to be honored this year at the She Rocks Awards, June 2nd. Um, cool. A lot to celebrate. And, and I'm happy that we got to chat, chat with you today all about it. Thank you. Thank you, Meredith. Hey there. Thanks for watching Access TV. Subscribe, follow, like, and do all the good stuff. And make sure you leave a comment below. I don't know. Just let us know what your favorite Access TV show is or who your favorite bands are and what artists you're into. Or just say hi, man. I'd like to be told hi. We love hearing from you. That's the point, all right? Keep it coming.